So David, if you'd like to turn on your microphone and your webcam and I'll turn Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm looking forward to this chance to uh, discuss with you and share a little bit about some of the, the work I've been doing uh, in northern Ghana that many of you are aware of and have heard a little bit about over the years. Um, and it's also a, a chance to uh, hopefully build, build our, our network for Cody Connects through this webinar as I assume there's going to be some some questions and further opportunities for discussion uh, as we go forward. Um, so I think for the most part we'll, uh, we'll be looking at the, uh, the PowerPoint slides as I describe a little bit and talk about them. Uh, please feel free to uh, log questions uh, in text in the, in the chat or um, uh, log questions in the chat or um, just make a note on a piece of paper and we'll have a couple of chances as we go forward to uh, answer those questions and have a little bit of discussion about them. You have broken wire in that. Oh, and I think I have a problem with my mic, so just hold on for one minute and we're going to try something else. Yes, okay, so I've got a new um, uh, microphone. Hopefully people can, uh, can hear me. We tested one earlier, but of course when we get together it doesn't work. Um, uh, I can't hear anybody. Could someone say something so I can make sure I hear you with these new headphones? Can you hear me, David? Yes, Yogesh, thank you. I can hear you. Hi, David. How are you? You're good. Good to go. All right. So welcome, everyone. Um, I was hoping we would get a sense of um, um, who else is uh, in the room and uh, interested in this webinar. Um, uh, as we moved forward, but maybe I'll just jump run right in and we'll come back to a chance for a discussion in uh, a few minutes. So the title of this webinar is Building Community Resi Resilience, Lessons from Northern Ghana. Um, and uh, I'm hoping in sort of the hour, hour and 20 minutes uh, we have together, 
I'll do a bit of an introduction, but then spend quite a bit of time talking about um, what I've learned from the Dagara people in Upper West Region, Ghana, about community resilience. Um, specifically using some of the strategies they talk about resilience that uh, has been put together in this idea of a hand of resilience, five key strategies as the hand of resilience. Then we'll spend some time uh, talking about lessons learned from this process. I've been doing some work uh, in Upper West Region, Ghana, in uh, uh, a research project and some support for uh, development work that's going on there over the last nine years or so. So we'll talk about uh, some lessons learned from that process. Might not be able to get through all of them today, but I hope that uh, we'll have an opportunity to uh, maybe have a discussion on, on Cody Connects, or people can send me emails and we can discuss things afterwards. And I'm hoping we'll uh, have some time along the way, but also some quality time at the end of the discussion um, to talk about um, are these are these lessons useful for you? So in terms of the, the introduction and context, um, I began this work in thinking about building community resilience and the importance of community resilience many, many years ago. Um, partly because things are always changing in communities and around the world, uh, whether they're, they're economic changes or environmental changes or political, social changes. We seem to be living in a time of, of dramatic change, particularly around environmental issues and, and climate change, etc. And how do communities, how do groups, how do societies, how do nation states, how do they respond to these things, particularly when we're living in a time of, of corporate globalization that is promoted sort of as a single paradigm of how to make change and how to survive in the world and, and get ahead. So how do individual communities uh, adapt and make their own change in the face of sort of that, that single global structure? And, and part of it for me is, is from the work with some uh, indigenous communities in Canada and the work I've been doing on the African continent over the last 30 years or so was what can we learn from this sense of, of the biodiversity in nature, the different ways nature has of dealing with change, and the different ways that communities and cultures have um, of living their lives, their, their life ways is a phrase that's used in anthropology, and can we learn from a tagline in my, um, my email is this one at the bottom of this slide from, from Wade Davis, uh, a well-known uh, anthropologist from Canada. The world, the world in which you are born is just one model of reality. Other cultures are not failed attempts at being you. They are man unique manifestations of the human spirit. So that whole idea of looking at different manifestations of, of people's life ways and how they live their lives uh, was important in informing this work. Um, but this idea of, of resilience has become quite, um, quite trendy in the last um, 15, 20 years, particularly over the nine years that I've been doing this work and thinking about things. So I'd like people to uh, spend some time, just a couple of minutes, looking at these, um, these four statements on this slide. And I think Wendy is going to help me, so there will be a little poll that will pop up. So you can choose which one of these four statements most resonates for you in how you understand community resilience. There's no right or wrong answers. Uh, and there's only 10 of us here, but I'd like to get a sense from you of these four, which one most closely uh, resembles um, your understanding of community resilience. So read the statements and that poll should come up for you. So once I'm going to give you a few moments to go through the um, polling options and then you'll notice your choices will pop up.
So you'll notice that uh, the polling is there. And I'd ask you to click either one, two, three, or four on your screen. I'm just going to hide the poll. Uh, Eric, you should be able to see a little radio button that's next to the uh, that's next to the response itself. that's interesting okay so what I would like you to do is put your number one two three or four in the chat Very mysterious. We're having so few gremlins in here. <laughs> Excellent. So, David, we've got some responses in the chat. If you click over to the chat, you'll notice uh, what people uh, what people have responded to. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, fours, and a one. And Eric, can you toss yours in there as well? And another one from Aaron, and a two from Eric. So we've got uh, mostly fours. Well, wow, this is great. So, so thank you very much for this. Um, I think we could we could spend a whole hour and a half talking about these different statements. But as I started to learn about um, uh, resilience and community resilience, I realized there were all these different perspectives in the the academic literature and the practitioner literature, and they very often weren't communicating with each other and learning from each other, and um, in, in some ways, they were trying to, to define a concept, like we've defined participation before, and then impose it on people in communities of what they should do about resilience. And what I tried to do in my own work was, was be open to these different understandings, because I think all four of these statements are important ones, and we don't necessarily need to choose between them, but how can we be transdisciplinary and work and be open to communities of how they understand resilience and then help them build resilience in that way. So that's sort of how I started um, thinking about things uh, because there are psychological perspectives, um, environmental perspectives, sort of community development, disaster management perspectives, and then a rights and resistance perspective to what resilience is. So in, in my work and my discussions in, in communities, it was trying to be inclusive of all those different perspectives and see if similar things or something very different came up with the Dagara people. Um, as I mentioned, this is work that I've been uh, involved in the last uh, nine years or so. Involved in this work in different ways, uh, and on the other we know this topic as well. Um, the area in Ghana, I think everyone knows, Ghana is in West Africa. But the area where I was particularly doing this work was in the, as far as you can possibly get from Accra, the capital. Um, in the north, 
west corner where you see the red arrow, uh, upper west region. And the Dagara people are the, the majority people in that particular region, but a total population of less than a million people in the Ghanaian context of uh, about 20 odd million. Um, but there's also Dagara people in Burkina Faso and some in Cote d'Ivoire, so very much that upper west region of Ghana where I know some of you have been before. Um, culturally similar to upper east region a little bit and other parts of Ghana. So in terms of setting the context rather than going into um, a whole bunch of, of background issues, there's a little video clip that I think a link to it is going to come up in the chat. It's just four minutes long. And I'd like everybody to uh, have a look at that video clip and then we'll just have a, a short discussion about what comes up for you from the context uh, after watching this video clip. So folks, you'll notice that the YouTube clip is now in the chat. Just click on it and it will bump you over to a YouTube video. Four minutes and then, uh, then we'll begin again after four minutes has passed.
Okay, so it looks like everyone has done the video. So what we're going to do now is move you into groups for those questions. And I realize other than moderators, there's only seven people. So maybe we'll have one group of three and one group of four. And this is just for, for five or six minutes for a quick discussion. So where is my... 